Peace, peace. This your host, Selah Shalom. And I want to give a shout out to all the people who has been supporting the uh, medicinal herbal tea. I like to big y'all up, you know what I'm saying? In return, y'all could get the benefits that the tea has to offer. Um, you know, in the different parts of the United States, those who hit me up, big shout outs. You know what I'm saying? A couple went to Maryland, a couple went to New York, Illinois, North Carolina, California. Just want to give a shout out for y'all support. Now, the name of the documentary today is called, What is Disease and How It's Removed? And I'm going to use this medical illustration book and go through some of the illustrations that they have describing the nature of some of these diseases that we suffer from. So I'm just going to go in and give you a quick breakdown of the illustrations and the nature of what disease really is. Addressing diseases. What I'm going to do is address the disease and then show you how the diseases are removed. First we're going to talk about osteoporosis. Osteo meaning bone, porosis meaning thinning or loss of density, and osis meaning condition. So what we have here is a condition where the bones are losing density, basically becoming brittle. Now if the bones are brittle, that means the bones are not getting oxygen to feed the calcium cell. That's the root of osteoporosis, lack of oxygen. Next I'm going to talk about arthritis, which means arthro meaning joint and itis meaning inflammation. So what we have here is inflammation of the joints. Now when we observe this illustration it shows a normal hip and joint and then it shows you the same hip and joint compromised with osteoarthritis. Now when we observe the osteoarthritis we are looking at erosions of the bone and cartilage. And this condition is caused when the calcium and phosphorus cells, which is the cells that make up your skeleton, bones and joints, is not getting enough oxygen. So when your cells are not getting enough oxygen, in this case being the bones, it produces cell erosion. Now next, when we look at rheumatoid arthritis on the hand, we see the same condition as osteoarthritis. The joints within the hand goes through the same erosion. So when the joints in your hand is not getting enough oxygen, it produces rheumatoid arthritis. Now when we observe rheumatoid arthritis of the knee, again we see the same conditions. Bone erosion. But this time it's just located in the knee. And again this condition is produced by lack of oxygen. Now when we look at the vascular necrosis of the hip, a vascular meaning lacking blood vessels. Then you got necro meaning dead or death and osis meaning condition. So what we have here is a condition where the blood vessels are dead surrounding the femur bone. And if you notice it states dead bone. Anytime a cell is completely deprived of oxygen it becomes dead. It becomes a dead cell. So the root of this condition is lack of oxygen once again. Now let's take a look at respiratory infection. Now when we observe the abnormal air, we see a lot of inflammation going on on the tympanic membrane, showing signs of inflammation. And also the edema shows sign of inflammation. The otis, meaning inflammation of the air, and here you got blockage. Now anytime we're dealing with inflammation, we're dealing with acid and the lack of oxygen, which the acid robs the cell of oxygen. So anytime we're dealing with inflammation, infection, we're dealing with the acid condition. Now when we look at pneumococcal, pneumonia, pneumo meaning breath, air, or respiration, and cocal meaning bacteria, or basically a cell. So this is a bacteria of the respiration. But bacteria is a cell and falls under the same rules of all cells. But when we look at this illustration, we see mucus as the cause of this condition. Pus is mucus. And when we look at laryngitis, pharyngitis, it's all inflammation of the cells. Now when we look at the pharyngitis, it shows enlarged tonsils. And I addressed a female who had enlarged tonsils and tonsillitis. Anytime you have enlargement or abnormal conditions in the body, 
the cause is blockage. All cells are in motion, and anytime you block something that is in motion, it creates an enlargement and a swelling in the area found where there is blockage, in this case, in the tonsils. Now let's address allergies such as sinusitis. Again, anytime you see the suffix ITIS, you already know we're dealing with an inflammatory condition, and acid and mucus is the cause of such condition. Now let's address asthma, which is inflammation of the bronchial tube, even bronchitis. Here we have two illustrations of a normal bronchial tube and a bronchial tube that is asthmatic. Now when we observe the cause of the asthma, we see mucus. And what the mucus do is station itself in the bronchial tube, in the lungs. And this condition is called asthma. So again, mucus is the cause. Now let's take a look at this illustration showing atherosclerosis. Athero meaning fat, or sclero meaning hardening, and osis meaning condition. So what we're dealing with here is a conditioning where fat hardens in the arteries, creating plaque. And again, what we are seeing is mucus buildup that has hardened within the arteries. When mucus hardens, it becomes plaque. Now when we observe a thrombotic stroke, thrombo meaning blood clot, we are looking at mucus as the cause of this condition. If you notice the blocked arteries, what is causing the blockage? Mucus. And when mucus is hardened, it turns into plaque. So a thrombotic stroke is caused by mucus hardening into plaque. Now when we look at nephrosclerosis, nephro meaning kidney, sclerosis meaning hardening, and osis meaning condition. So what we have here is a condition where the kidney has become hard. And if you notice the dotted lines are showing the size of a normal kidney compared to a kidney that has nephrosclerosis. Anytime organs are not oxygenized, they begin to dehydrate and shrink. Now when we observe the upper gastrointestinal tract, it shows us a picture of gallstone. And a gallstone is when your bile, which is a liquid, has become hard into a calcification, a rock or stone. And the gallbladder is designed to store bile, which is a liquid, and release bile, which is a liquid, into the small intestines to help in digesting fat. So if the bile, which is normally liquid, becomes hardened in the gallbladder, that would hinder the process of the small intestine digesting fat, and in return putting a strain on the small intestines. Now constipation is when your large intestines is not producing enough secretion to help aid in digesting. Now when we observe prostate conditions, including cancer, which is common to most men, we see swelling. And anytime you have swelling, it's caused by blockage. Now when we observe a urinary tract infection, it can cause pyelonephritis. Pylo meaning pelvis, nephro meaning kidney, and itis meaning inflammation. So what we have here is inflammation of the renal pelvis due to inflammation of the kidney. A bladder infection is inflammation of the bladder. Urethritis is inflammation of the urethra. And next we have the complications of diabetes. And when we observe this picture of arteriosclerosis, again, it shows plaque as the cause of this condition. And plaque is mucus when it gets hard. So here it shows how it first appear, and then it shows how it begin to build up if not corrected. And finally, it will cause thrombo, meaning a blood clot. And this is how blood clots are formed by mucus becoming hardened in the arteries. Now after all what was said, let me put it all together and make sense of these conditions. Now if you notice, all the diseases were either inflammation, which is caused by acid buildup, and mucus. As I have stated several times, that disease is mucus and acid. None else but those two things, regardless of the nature of disease. Now the body is made up of cells, and if you understand the nature of a cell, you would understand the nature of the whole body. A cell needs oxygen in order to live. If a cell is deprived from getting oxygen, the cell will begin to gradually die, and the process from the cell dying to it is completely dead is disease. That's the process, and that's the nature of disease. So oxygen is the key to a healthy cell and in return a healthy body. Now how do we remove these conditions of disease from the body? First thing to understand is that the blood system is the most important system to understand because the blood is the fuel for the body to operate correctly. The vein and the arteries are very important because they supply and remove oxygen to the organs, tissues, and bones. 
Now, the unique thing about the blood system is that it is connected to all the organs, tissues, and bones. So if your organs, tissues, and bones are having complication, the root of it lies in the blood system. Why? Because the blood is responsible for supplying oxygen to the organs, tissues, and bones. So like I stated about the cell, if a cell is not getting oxygen, it will begin to gradually die. And this is the cause with your organs, tissues, and bones when they are not getting enough oxygen. So this is why the blood system is so important because it distributes blood which in return carries oxygen to the organs, tissues, and bones. Now another thing to understand is your blood. Now it's one thing for blood to carry oxygen to the organs, tissues, and bones for the organs, tissues, and bones to stay healthy. Now it's another thing for your blood to be clean for the oxygen to be carried smoothly to the organs, tissues, and bones. Now here's where another problem lies in the blood itself. If the blood becomes compromised with mucus and acid, likewise would be the organs, tissues, and bones. All the inflammation that organs, tissues, and bones go through is based off the acid in the blood because the blood got to supply the organs, tissues, and bones with oxygen. And when your organs, tissues, and bones are not getting enough oxygen, it creates cell erosion, inflammation, mucus buildup, which is all due to a lack of oxygen. So the root of disease lies in the blood. Now here's where the medicinal herbal tea is so effective when it comes to addressing diseases. The mineral that is responsible for blood is iron. And as I stated before, the blood is the fuel to keep the body operating properly. So iron is vital to the body. Now iron carries oxygen, which supplies the organs, tissues, and bones. The bones are calcium and phosphorus. And it is oxygen that keeps the calcium and phosphorus in the bone alive and thriving. Now the medicinal herbal tea is iron based. The majority of the herbs I use are high in iron, which in return would be high in oxygen once entering the body. So here's how it works. Any organ, tissue, or bone that is not getting oxygen is gradually dying, which is the nature and condition of disease. So the medicinal herbal tea supplies the blood system with rich iron and oxygen and when the iron enters the bloodstream it will begin to clear away the acid and mucus in the blood and then in return it will remove the mucus and acid residing on the organs tissues and bones and thus clearing away the disease being mucus and acid see that so that's how the medicinal herbal tea works addressing disease found in the body so all what was said you could see that disease is only acid and mucus and with the medicinal herbal tea, what that does is neutralize the acid and remove the mucus throughout all areas of the body where the disease is found. So if you're still interested, just email me, owaspi101 at gmail.com. And um, salute, catch you on the next documentary. Shalom.